Welcome back to Fox and Friends on this Sunday morning. We want to bring in Donald Trump, fresh off of his debate performance last night uh, in New Hampshire. J uh, Donald joins us on the phone this morning. And also our Kevin Carlson as well, who's on the ground in New Hampshire. Got people all over the place this morning. Welcome to all of you. And we want to get to this, uh, Mr. Trump, as we talk about what was one of the highlights of last night's debate, uh, this back and forth between you and Governor Bush over the use of eminent domain. Let's play the sound bite and we'll talk about it. Take a listen. Eminent domain is an absolute necessity for a country, for our country. Without it, you wouldn't have roads, you wouldn't have hospitals, you wouldn't have anything. The Keystone Pipeline, without eminent domain, it wouldn't go 10 feet, okay? You need eminent domain. What Donald Trump did was use eminent domain to try to take the property of an elderly woman on the strip in Atlantic City. That is not public purpose. That is downright wrong. You tried. A lot of times, you'll have, you'll have, and, and it doesn't work very well. With How tough is it a to lot of like times, property from an elderly woman? woman. Oh. All right, Mr. Trump, are you there? I am. Okay. I am. Okay, great. So then at the end of that exchange, the audience began to boo, and, you know, it, it, rather than feeling like they were booing you and your message, you kind of flipped the switch on the audience and said, you know what, that's right. the donor class out there. How do you think you handled that, and how were you so sure that they disagreed with you only because they were the donor class? Well, first of all, Jeff doesn't understand eminent domain, what it means and what it represents. He has no clue. And that, you know, was really too bad. But more importantly, the problem with that, with what, you know, when you heard the people out there, they were all the donors and the special interest of the lobbyists that gave the other guys up on the stage, mostly Jeff. You know, Jeff got into $100 million and he's nowhere. They gave Jeff, because I, I noticed every time he said, if he sneezed, they clap. You know, they're trying to root him on. But I thought it was very unfair. And I said, those are the special interests. Now, I'm self-funding my own campaign, so I don't have any donors or lobbyists, and although I knew many of the people in the audience. They were laughing. We were having a good time. But, you know, I, re I was referring to it. And this is exactly the problem we have. Those people have totally total control over Jeff and the other candidates where they give so much money to. And the audience was packed with all donors and special interests. Now you mentioned during the debate you asked the RNC for seats. You, you, you mentioned you said we asked the RNC and they told us. Could you elaborate on that? What did the RNC well, tell you? For sure. I asked the RNC for seats and we get 20. 20 is not a lot, okay? You know, we get 20 seats. Big deal out of like 1,500 or whatever they had in the room. And I said, wow, that's not very much. My people did this. And then they said, well, mostly the donors and the various people that have the seats. And I said, wow, that's not very fair. They make contributions to the RNC or they make contributions to the various candidates. But because of the fact, Tucker, that I'm not accepting contributions, I say, well, what does that mean? That, that's not fair. But I made it look. That's part of the problem with the system. And that's one of the advantages I have, and I think it's why I'm doing well, is that the people know that I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to be for the insurance companies or the oil companies. I'm going to do the right thing for the best. So it's so interesting to watch this, because here you are, the front runner here in New Hampshire, and last night, and you just did it again, you, you went after the oil companies, the insurance companies, you defended eminent domain, you called for higher taxes on the richest, and you attacked the Iraq war. All of those are violations of the Republican catechism. It sounds like you think the Republican Party really needs to change in a pretty dramatic way. Well, they're going to have to if they're going to remain relevant. Look, the Iraq war was a disaster. A guy like Jeff Bush took a six days before he was able to figure out whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. He had no clue. Uh, you look at eminent domain, you wouldn't have highways, you wouldn't have roads. You know, look, I don't love eminent domain, but if you don't have eminent domain, you don't have airports, you don't have roads, you don't have bridges. You don't have school, that is a way. Now, people don't realize with eminent domain, it's called a taking. But when it gets taken, the people that own the land get a tremendous amount of money. They get fair market value or more. And the Keystone Pipeline, I say this, because the conservatives are, you know, they don't like about the eminent domain, although they, most of them don't even know what it means. But what happens, the Keystone Pipeline could never be built. And every conservative wants the Keystone Pipeline. It wouldn't go five feet without eminent domain, Doctor. And when I say that, it's just a lot of a month. But, you know, look, it's just one of those things. No, the Republican Party has to come up with the times. The Republican Party is way, way behind the times. And they've got to get smart or they're not going to exist very much longer. 
And Mr. Trump, coming out of Iowa, it wasn't the number one cruise or the number two Trump that it seemed like everybody had the knives out for. It was number three Rubio. Has his rise actually helped you? Did it help you last night in that the jabs were going toward him and less toward you? Well, I saw Tucker last night, and, and you could see, you know, I was in a good mood because everybody was saying I won the debate, and they're all saying that now, and that's good, but, you know, it was very important. I thought the debate was very important for me last night. Uh, you know, Iowa is an interesting thing. I, I love that we had a great relationship with Iowa. It's a very complicated system, that whole talking system. And, you know, we started off with 17 candidates, but I came in second, but I might have come in first. I mean, if you had the Ben Carson vote, all of a sudden, I come in first. Just what took place with Ben Carson? It was a shame what they did to Ben Carson. To be honest with you, what Ted did to Ben Carson. But you know, I, I had a great experience in Iowa. But I think here we seem to be doing very well. I do think this. I do think that the debate last night was very important. Well, there was a big moment, of course, Ted Cruz apologizing to Dr. Ben Carson uh, on stage after he was sort of fact-checked about the way the way that CNN uh, did not, in fact tweet out anything about Dr. Ben Carson taking a break from the campaign and ending his, his bid in Iowa. Then, of course, he apologized. Did you think that that apology was sufficient? After all, you said that that was probably one of the reasons he won Iowa. Well, I think that was the reason he won, because if he didn't have all of those thousands of votes from Ben Carson, I would have won. So I think it's really the reason. I don't know if Ben yeah. accepts the apology, because the apology came too late. I mean, you know, it didn't help Ben he got an apology. It was a terrible thing that happened to them. So we're, we're going to a uh, Bernie Sanders rally uh, this morning for a package for tomorrow. You've been compared to him or he to you, both as populist and fused campaigns. If he were to get the Democratic nomination, how would you run against him? Well, I think I would love to run against a socialist, probably even a communist, okay, if you want to know the truth. I would love to run against Bernie Sanders, although there's something very beautiful about running against Hillary if she ever gets out of her email camp which she shouldn't be able to, but I think she's going to be protected by the Democrats. Uh, number one, his taxes are going to be so high uh, that it will be, you know, when, when we really expose what his real plan is, I think it'll be very, very easy to beat. Mr. Trump, how's your ground game in New Hampshire? Some criticize you for not having as strong of a ground game in Iowa as, as Senator Cruz. How are you doing in New Hampshire two days away? Well, again, we did well in Iowa. You know, we, we got the most votes in the history of the caucuses in Iowa for Republican, other than the one, you know, the one Cruz vote. And uh, so, you know, we did pretty well in all fairness. But uh, this is going to be, we have a very good team. I have very, you know, great confidence in the team. But it's a little bit different. And, you know, New Hampshire has, a, in my opinion, a much better system. You like somebody, you go in and you vote and you leave. And... There's something that's very nice about that. You need a little bit less of a ground game. But we have a good ground game anyway, just in case. But we seem to be doing well. I've been friendly with New Hampshire for so long. I love the people. I have so many friends up here. And, okay. you know, long, be long before politics. Hey, Donald, we're up against a hard break. We know you had a long night last night. We thank you for taking a few moments with us this morning. Howard Kurtz is on the other side of this break with his analysis of <laughs> Marco Rubio wears heels and attended a gay door phone party in Miami. Ted Cruz is a Canadian. Hill Dog is a bulldog. Bernie Sanders is a, is a communist. Trump 2016, gonna make America great again.